morning everybody I'm here hi all those are joining um, I'm here by the River Team just by Ludlow Castle I can actually see the castle just up above me I don't know whether you can see that let me just turn the camera I hope you can see the turrets just up there um, but I'm down by the River Team because it is a little bit quieter um, it's quite busy here. Uh, you can hear some chainsawing. I don't know why, but everywhere you go in the countryside, there seems to be a chainsaw or a lawnmower or something. <laughs> so the, there will be a little bit of noise as I'm going live here. Hi. Um, I'm here for three days and I'm doing some work here. So I thought I'd just take a short break and come down to the river and talk about on plein air painting or drawing sketching whatever you want to call it um, the title is obviously French hi and um, it comes well it, it means painting out in the open air so I thought if I found a nice uh, situation for us to sit together and what I'll do is I'll point the camera at the view that I'm going to sketch myself and you can have a go that's if you've got some paper or pencils or anything to sketch with uh, near you if not you can just watch me sketch <laughs> all right it's a gorgeous day I think it's going to be about 26 27 degrees here today which is really unusual um, I'm I've just watched in fact if I turn I don't know whether you can turn the camera while live let me just try Oh, you can right okay that's the first I just been sitting here on a pontoon I found a quiet spot um, where they launch the boats from onto this river and um, I, I've already seen two people swim by along this river so I think I'm probably going to take a dip myself later if it, especially if it keeps warming, warming up the way it is um, but this is the river team uh, this is the closest bit to the castle, but if you go further up river um, north, then you hit a couple of weirs. And what I'll do is I'll wander up there later and I'll take a few pictures and you can um, maybe do some sketching from those pictures. But as you can see, it's totally beautiful. Um, and I haven't seen any wildlife yet, but I've only just sat down. So, um, yeah. So what I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm just going to reverse the camera again. I'm going to take my sketchbook and I'm just going to talk you through the stuff on the back a bit. I'm just going to talk you through what I look for when I'm painting out in the open. So, sorry if it goes a bit dark and a bit light and so on and so forth, but the sun is very strong. Um, if you don't know where Ludlow is, it's in, well, it's almost on Office Dyke Path. Uh, it's in the Shropshire Hills. Uh, it's very, very beautiful. I come here quite a lot because the town is great for sketching. And obviously the castle, and then you've got the two rivers here converging. There's a lot of history, a lot of Tudor buildings. Um, and it's just a great spot, really, um, to come and sketch just remember to bring your art materials with you everywhere you go and then you can sketch away. I often use uh, watercolour postcards uh, which I paint onto and then I send to people and that's a really nice thing to do. So if I reverse again the camera, okay you can see that this bit of the river is not particularly spectacular I mean it's really really pretty but there aren't that many sort of focal points along it however we have got a sweep down here that sweeps off to the left and we've got some major trees obviously we're at the, in the height of summer at the moment and um, everything's in full leaf so obviously you've got a lot of green going on so one of the first things I look for is um, some sort of focal point and I can see just in the distance that there are some uh, reed beds just across the way on the corner 
So I'm going to look at that. There's also a branch hanging over. Um, that's where the water gets agitated a little bit more as well. So you can use the textures on the water there and describe those. You can focus in on something close up like the reed bed there and the reflections of the reeds in the water. So it's up to you really. And, and, and reflections generally are very nice to paint or draw. So you can see as we sweep along. So I always I, I normally carry a little uh, viewfinder with me, um, but you can use your phone and take a picture and put a grid on, um, and that will give you uh, the rules of third. So always when I say about rules of third, I say put your horizon. So if we look at this image now, if you put your horizon, so the horizon line is where the water touches the sky basically. It's not the top of the trees, it's the line where the water touches the sky. That's the horizon in this picture anyway. And what happens is you either put it on the lower third mark or on the upper third mark. So you can see that I'm just moving it above midway. If you, put, if you were to put that horizon along the middle, then your picture will look like it's folding in half. So don't do that. Either put the horizon up towards the top or down towards the bottom. So in that circumstance, it really depends on whether you like sky or water. So I'm gonna go for sky today, uh, mainly because the sky is so um, beautiful at the moment. I mean, we've got blue sky. When we've got blue sky, we should make, take advantage and draw it. Okay, so that's, that would be my choice of composition. Now the other option is to turn. Now I'm going to turn the camera, so obviously the image is going to turn on you. So you might have to turn your head in order to see this. But the other option is to go landscape. Oh, you, right. Okay. So that might have switched off then. So the, the other option is to go, this is portrait. And the other option is to go, oh, we've got some cows coming through there at the moment. Look, can you see them? Oh, that's very sweet. They're just going through on the opposite bank. I don't know if you can see them. See, this is all you have to do is just sit and wait and things start happening around you. They will probably wander all the way along the river bank now and probably poke their heads through over there, hopefully. Anyway, so back to what we were talking about. So, yeah. Put your horizon on the bottom third and then you can start to sketch. So, I am going to now look, come down here to my um, my sketchbook. Sorry if you can see my legs. <laughs> so I'm just going to try and work out what, what I can see and what I can't see on here. So what I tend to do is I tend to draw a couple of boxes like this. I'm hoping you can see this. So I, I will draw in advance, I will draw a couple of, let me just make myself decent, like that. Oh. Right, I draw a couple of boxes and I will compose a couple of images. So what you can do is if you, did that what I said which was to put the horizon on on the surface and when I talk to talk about rules of thirds I'm talking about this okay so this is your third so you've got one third two thirds three thirds okay so my horizon line is going along there the sweep of the river comes down like that and goes off the end of the paper but then the end of the river comes round there like that and then up here like this. So you've got this curve happening and that's quite dynamic because it brings the eye in into the picture like that and then your eye follows around there like that. Okay, so it's a really good dynamic composition to have something coming in and going out of the picture. All right. If you can see that a little bit better. I know there's a shadow on my sketchbook. I might have to move in a minute. 
Okay, so that's one composition. The other composition is to put it higher. So we look at the, the thirds again, like that. And we put the river up here. So the river would come up there like that. So you can get a little bit more river in, which is good. And then we've got this sort of sweep like that. So you can see the difference in the two compositions. You've got far more river here and less sky. So once you've decided, you can compose your main picture. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to shift over one bit so that I'm out of this shadow. Okay, Oop. I'm going to show you the river while, while I'm doing that. Oop. Hopefully, even though the shadow is of me behind, it'll be a bit clearer. Okay, so there's my sketchbook. So this is the other half of my paper. So I'm going to go for a vertical composition like so. I'm going to split that into thirds. I'm really sorry about this. Uh, work going on in the background. I settled my dark self down and he started working. It's sod's law, isn't it? Right, so there's my thirds. Across I go with my horizon and then into this shape here where the river comes down like that. Okay, so there's my main composition. I can now look, if I look here at my scene, I know that I've got a tree coming down. Now, another thing you can do with composition is you can remove and add things. So I'm going to, on the left, where the, where the cows came through just earlier on, there's a big tree. Now I'm going to probably take that one out and I may reduce the density of the trees on the right hand side. And that's the, the beautiful thing about sketching um, out your own compositions is that you can do that. You can um, happily recompose an image to your own liking. So if I go back to my sketchbook again, like this, this is not as easy as, as it looks. Right, okay, so we've got the main composition. I don't know whether you can see that very well. Okay, yeah. So on the right hand side, I'm going to have the reed bed. There's a reed bed here. And I'm just going to quickly just sketch this in because I don't want this to last forever because I only have a certain amount of battery and uh, Wi-Fi signal here. So I just want to quickly get the main details in. So like I said, there's a tree here, but I'm going to leave that out because I want that riverbank to be plain. So I'm going to put my long bulrushes in like so because there would be bulrushes there. Um, the ground comes out a little bit more into the water, um, just around here, and there are various grasses and such like. So the river comes around here. Now, what do we do here, right? So on this bank, there is a tree. However, part of a tree hangs out over the end here. So I'm gonna put that one in because I quite like that shape. So I'm just going to roughly sketch and I'm just gonna make it quite dark and that will give it a little a feeling of a bit of perspective. I'm also gonna reduce the, the, the height of this down a little. Okay, so then we go on to the far bank. We look at the image again we're going to go on to the far bank. We're going to go back down here and there's a huge tree hanging out over the water here, which I'm going to put in because it's quite grand. I don't know what it is. It looks like it possibly could be, uh, it could be a willow, but it may 
may be an oak because there is there seems to be an awful lot of oaks around here so I'm just going to put in the main structure of that tree and I can see that there are some trunks coming up here so that's quite a nice detail that I didn't see initially this is the lovely thing about sketching is that because you're sitting and you're properly looking more, more than you would do if you were just taking a photograph or um, just looking at a view without doing anything you're, you're, you're having a proper gaze at your subject and there's a dark shadow coming down under here and I'm going to use that shadow to create the trunks coming up to that tree there well he stopped how much nicer is that so there we go there's some trunks coming down there I've negative um, I'm looking at the negative shapes in between the trunks to make those trunks stand out so rather than drawing the trunks I don't know whether you can see that can you see that I know that the shadows on the work so and again look then forward into the, the foreground of those areas and there's a little bank coming up off there um, and that tree does come down behind it so I will shade that area in there like that so I'm just blocking in now you can either do that with pencil or you can do it with colour um, it's really up to you I'm um, obviously down to what you've brought with you there's another tree just there I'm just going to block that in and uh, underneath here is very dark so I'm going to just put a shadow in here like so so you can see the composition building up I'm going to leave because I know there's land here I'm going to leave this area empty I'm going to make that out to be a bit of land in the same way as this one here in the same way as this one here just so that we have a nice um what what needs to happen is the eye needs to go down there round and then what i want to do is guide it up so if your eyes going down along the river naturally it will do that and follow this line and then go up because there's a gap here it will go up and then into the sky so here now we can work on clouds so I'm just going to draw in basic cloud lines here like that and I'm going to do a little bit of shading so the, the sky is blue here like so and then there's a blue strip coming down this section here so you can see I'm using the side of my pencil. I've got a 2B pencil here. Um, the 2B is nice and soft. It means that you can sort of smudge a little bit. Um, normally when you buy a tin of pencils, you get um, a range of sh um, hardnesses. So you get from 2B, 3B, 4B, 5B, etc., etc. So the, the further they go down, um, the softer they become so your shading ability increases so that you can see this one is sort of reasonably soft it means that you can move it um, take lead onto your finger and move that color into things like clouds um, to soften them up add a little bit of depth um, you can see here now that I've got the outline of my tree and I'm just going to loosely shade that tree in there um, and like I said it's very dark here and then there are darker patches within that structure so you can sort of describe the form a little bit more as you're going along like this okay um, this is cloud so you need to leave that fairly light but we need to define this edge from the cloud because the if you look at the image um, you can see that the if you squint I mean you don't really need to squint but you can see the difference in tonal value between the tree and the sky so you need to make sure that when you come to your work that you are 
making sure that that tonal value is there so you can see the difference between the tree and the cloud okay so continue filling in those areas until you're happy so no, so now it's always good to record um, so where you've been so I always write where it is and what the date is and I don't know what the date is I think it's the 30th but I'm not sure so the date so that you know when and where you've been and what you've done um, it's good to keep your little sketches on on the sketchbook so keep them all together so that you have a reference point um, you can also record colors but obviously if you've got a camera you can take a photograph but if you haven't then you can sort of put um, cobalt blue for the sky etc sort of um, if you're doing watercolors you can put Windsor green so suggestions of colors that you've seen on the day but I don't know whether you can see the sun has gone in a little bit now and the colors have changed completely so record the time of day as well is, is another good one um, one thing that I haven't done is made any reference in the water so I'm going to go and do that now um, there, there are some lighter patches coming through here now when you draw water the best thing to do is to keep your line horizontal so don't draw your lines like this horizontal lines coming across like this um, you can put in slight sort of wavy lines um, you can also shade so I can see that the the water is quite dark in this area here but pl please try and keep those lines horizontal and you shouldn't go far wrong if you don't keep your lines horizontal what tends to happen is the the water feels like it's dropping off the side of the the composition so make sure you keep those lines nice and horizontal as you're going along so work those lines in it would be very dark along this bank where the water touches the edge of the land so make sure that you get those dark patches in and that's because the sun is coming from here from our the right hand side that's another good thing to put on a sketch is the direction of where the sun is shining so that then you get all your shadows on the right on the right side of the object that you're so the shadows will be on the bottom left of the structures of this tree on the left of the tree trunks etc and the shadow would be coming in off the trees onto the water here like so okay so the water's changed again and we've got a dark a really dark patch just showing here just in that section there and we've got some really nice patches I don't know whether you can see but we've got some really nice patches coming off from this side here so I'm just going to put those in um, the other thing you can do with water is if you smudge the pencil in you can see that fills in really quite quickly just smudge with your finger and use the excess that's on your finger to block in any other areas you can take <coughs> your pencil a rubber now this is the only rubber I've got I'm not sure whether it's working properly because it feels a bit hard to me let me just see if the other end is ah the other end might work so I've got a little rubber that was on the end of one of these retractable uh, pencils here um, and you can lift now I don't know whether I can do this well yes I can so you can lift highlights off like this so especially in water where you've got a lot of highlights you can just lift off marks that come from the movement of the water so just lift them off like so so I don't know whether you can see that you can also lift highlights so for example if there's a really strong highlight on the side of this tree then you can lift that off 
and etc etc okay you can also sketch in pen I've got these really cheap CD markers they're really good for sketching and I often sketch in in biro as well so don't limit yourself to just pencil take charcoal pastel whatever you want to take um, I think I'll probably leave it there let me just reverse myself so I'll take a picture of the final sketch and I'll put that up I, I hope you've enjoyed it um, like I said I didn't want it to be too long because I don't know how much battery I've got and how much um, Wi-Fi I've got so I'll say goodbye from the River team and from let's just have a last look at the castle you can see the castle well you can see the castle a little bit up there and the sun has just gone in behind the clouds so I think I might wait for half an hour before I go throwing myself into the river team I hope you have a lovely weekend and uh, so yes yeah, so lovely few days actually it's only Thursday isn't it <laughs> I'm gonna do a little bit more sketching I'll put those up with with the film um, later on and uh, so that you can have a sketch yourself but get yourself out there it's beautiful it's gonna be really lovely tomorrow as well find a nice shady spot and do some sketching even if you just go out in your garden I know a lot of you are still shielding um, but it's it's it makes you feel much better if you get out uh, and do some sketching and just get out in the fresh air so from the river team I'm signing off and I'll see you at the next tutorial which will be next week and the next art, art chat um, I'm going to do some, well, I'm going to go in sort of undercover on uh, to the range or some art shop that I can find. And I'm going to try and walk you through um, what materials are. You know, a lot of you say you go into art shops and you're a bit overwhelmed um, with what's on display. There's so much choice. Uh, you don't know what to pick what is the most useful uh, material to pick for a beginner, uh, etc. So I'll probably do a little sort of secret shopping trip, <laughs> probably in the range, because I know that most people have the range around them or in their town. So, okay, bye for now. And like I said, have a, have a good, few days in the sun and I'll see you next week. Bye!